example, and closing the equity gap between children and young people who are most and least advantaged. We are supporting a range of activities, including Raising Attainment for All, which is working, as I said earlier, with over 150 schools across Scotland uh, to drive forward sustainable and consistent improvement. The School Improvement Partnership Programme, our Access to Education Fund, and as announced in our programme for government attainment and advisors to be based in every local authority across Scotland, as well as a very clear focus on improving literacy and numeracy in P1 to P3 pupils uh, through our Read, Write, Count programme. Michael McMahon. I thank the Cabinet Secretary for a response, but with uh, recent uh, reports indicating that you know, students from uh, more affluent backgrounds are 50 times more likely than uh, students from more deprived areas to uh, obtain uh, five higher grades A. And other statistics showing huge gulfs between academic achievement uh, from affluent areas to deprived areas. Will the Cabinet Secretary give us a clear indication today what practical measures are being taken to reduce those gulfs? Because we cannot allow our education system to maintain uh, such differentials between uh, students with uh, strong academic potential uh, not achieving their, their uh, aims and ambitions because of the geographical area in which they uh, happen to grow up. Cabinet Secretary. Absolutely. I think Mr McMahon and I are in agreement that inequity anywhere in our education system uh, is not acceptable and this government will do everything within our existing powers uh, to tackle poverty and inequality. I've already said to members uh, previously today that my top priority as the Cabinet Secretary for Education and Lifelong Learning is attainment for all to raise that and to do everything that we can to close uh, the equity and attainment gap. Uh, I do regret that we don't have more welfare powers uh, to tackle poverty, uh, but nonetheless we will, with the powers that we have, uh, focus on pragmatic measures on the front line within schools that will make a practical difference uh, to the lives uh, of our children on a day-to-day -day basis and ensuring that more of our children uh, reach their full potential. Thank you. If we're very brief, question number 20, Gordon MacDonald. To ask the Scottish Government how the expansion of funded early learning and childcare will benefit the most disadvantaged. Aileen Campbell. Through the Children and Young People Act, we are investing £329 million in this financial year and next to expand annual funded early learning and childcare for three and four-year-olds to 600 hours. That represents an increase which will save families up to £707 per year per child. And we have extended this entitlement to our most disadvantaged two-year-olds, with around 15% becoming eligible in the current school year, rising to 27% next year. That is more than in any of our, our predecessors have done, and more hours of childcare than in any other part of the UK. Briefly, please, Mr MacDonald. I thank the Minister for that answer. Could the Minister outline what the Scottish Government is doing to raise awareness of funded childcare to parents and carers? Minister. We launched the second phase of our marketing campaign to raise awareness amongst parents and carers of the expanded childcare entitlement. And that follows an initial phase of public information that happened in the summer. And this uh, new uh, launch of this campaign coincided with the Cabinet Secretary's visit to Melville Street Nursery in Edinburgh, uh, which I hope will address some of the concerns the member raises. Many thanks. That concludes questions. And we now move to the next item of business. I would ask members to change places as quickly as possible. Thank you. The next item of business is a statement by Shona Robertson on NHS Grampian Health and Improvement Scotland reports. The Cabinet Secretary will take questions at the end of her statement and there should therefore be no interventions or interruptions. I now call the Cabinet Secretary. Ten minutes, Ms Robson. Presiding Officer, in March uh, this year, the then Cabinet Secretary for Health and Wellbeing, Alec Neill, was made aware of concerns about quality of care and patient safety by a number of senior consultants from Aberdeen Royal Infirmary. The Scottish Government acted swiftly in response to this contact and within a week Healthcare Improvement Scotland had arranged to begin the first stage of the work which has culminated in the reports published on the HIS website yesterday morning. The short life review of quality and safety in Aberdeen Royal Infirmary and the report on care for older people in the ARI and Woodend Hospital. A third report on NHS Grampian has also been produced by the Royal College of Surgeons of England. 
The Board has published the terms of reference and the recommendations arising from its review on its website, but it has not yet published a full report due to legal action initiated by individuals named in the report. However, Healthcare Improvement Scotland has seen that report and have made their own recommendations to address many of the issues raised by the College. These reports highlight significant failings in the management of NHS Grampian, which, as the leader of the his review team has said, make sobering reading and which we take very seriously indeed. They also highlight the important role of the inspection regime that this government has put in place to scrutinise safety and quality in the NHS in Scotland. This statement sets out the Scottish Government's response to the findings of these reports and the action we expect NHS Grampian to take immediately and in the longer term. It's important to make clear up front that the work done by his did not identify consistent or widespread concerns about patient safety. Without minimising the importance of some of the concerns raised by the his reports, the review highlighted that Aberdeen Royal Infirmary is not significantly different from the Scottish average for a range of indicators of quality and safety of patient care, including the hospital's standardised mortality rate and infection rates. Parent, patients and carers also provided very positive feedback on their experiences during the inspection of care for older people, with 89% stating the care they received was good and staff being described as compassionate and considerate. But the report does highlight a number of issues relating to leadership, management and staffing, which, if not addressed immediately and decisively, pose a clear risk to the quality of patient care. That they haven't impacted adversely on the care of patients, the report makes quite clear, is due to the hard work of dedicated and highly committed frontline staff who have gone above and beyond to compensate for weaknesses in the structures and processes of NHS Grampian. And I want to put on record my sincere thanks to every member of staff in Grampian for their work in ensuring that the patients continue to get the best possible care. And I want to give them my assurance that we'll do everything possible to support them in making things better. This review was a complex and thorough piece of work. The HIS review team, headed up by Angus Cameron, currently Medical Director in NHS Dumfries and Galloway, agreed with NHS Grampian that they would examine two main areas. Firstly, the culture, leadership, values and behaviours in operation in the board. These things can be difficult to pin down, but they shape the day-to-day -day interactions in any organisation and are essential to support the ongoing delivery of a safe and high-quality system of healthcare. Secondly, the review team looked in detail at the actual quality and safety of care in a focused number of specialities and services, including the emergency department, general surgery and care of the elderly, with a clear focus on outcomes and experiences of patients using these services. The review team worked with NHS Grampian for over five months and gathered information from a wide range of sources. In addition to analysing nationally available data, the team spoke to around 530 members of staff, received feedback from 362 patients and carers, reviewed 49 case files, looked at 32 complaints and analysed 13 adverse events. Their work has created a rich picture of healthcare provision in Grampian. The picture painted by Dr Cameron's team is a worrying one. It describes a climate of mistrust between clinicians and senior management in managers in several specialities, Unprofessional behaviour by a number of consultants which impacted on morale and on the effectiveness of the service and which went largely unchallenged. And a failure to respond effectively to concerns about staffing pressures and vacancies. There's also evidence that managers were distant, trainees were inadequately supported, complaints were poorly handled and that systems of governance and performance management were weak, muddled or indeed absent. And make, me, make no mistake, these things are unacceptable in the NHS in Scotland and they will be resolved. And let me also send a clear message that no matter who you are or at what level you work in the NHS, these behaviours highlighted in the HIS review will not be tolerated in our National Health Service. The key issue must now be how these findings are responded to. The report on quality and safety contains 13 recommendations grouped under the headings of patient outcomes, leadership and culture, governance and accountability, staff go governance and complaints management. These are accompanied by 22 more detailed areas for improvement in the report of care for older people. I visited Aberdeen Royal Infirmary yesterday and spoke to staff and to the board to emphasise how much importance we attach to seeing real improvements being made. I was given assurances 
that NHS Grampian accepts every single one of these recommendations and, under the leadership of Malcolm Wright in its new interim chief executive, has already begun work to address many of these areas. The board has apologised for those instances where its patient care did not meet the required standard and has committed to improving leadership, management and engagement at the ARI and across NHS Grampian. The report highlights some particular concerns around nursing staffing levels and vacancy rates. The board is continuing to experience challenges around recruitment with factors like the high cost of living and competitive job market contributing to that challenge. But the board invested in the creation of 100 additional nursing posts in the year to March 2014 in priority areas like theatre, the emergency care centre and mental health services. A further almost 100 posts have been added to the nursing establishment since March and funding has been allocated for up to 40 posts in 2015-16. NHS Grampian is also actively recruiting to uh, vacant medical and nursing posts using every means at their disposal, including social media and executive search, as well as the more traditional means such as the medical careers events and graduate nurse recruitment, which saw 88 graduate nurses from Robert Gordon University placed in 2014. The his reports on NHS Grampian, while challenging to read, must be seen as a vindication of our unflinching resolve to shine a light on poor practice through the systematic use of independent inspection processes and to hold to account those healthcare providers who fail to provide the quality of care the people of Scotland deserve and the support that those working in the NHS in Scotland have the right to expect. We also recognise that we have a role to play in supporting the board to improve and we recognise that improvement will not happen overnight. Scottish Government is providing record levels of funding to NHS Grampian to support its recruitment efforts. In 2015-16, NHS Grampian's resource budget is planned to increase by 4.4% to £812.6 million, above inflation and, inflation and the largest increase of any board, having previously increased by 4.6% in 2014-15. These increases include sums of £15.5 million this year, and 17.5 million next year to move the board closer to its target share under the NRAC funding formula. The intention is that by 2016-17, NHS Grampian, along with all other territorial boards, will be no more than 1% away from NRAC parity. In addition to the financial support we are continuing to provide, we've put in place a comprehensive support team to advise and work alongside the new interim chief executive and his executive team in implementing the improvements needed to strengthen key systems, structures and processes. This vital organisation development will be supported by an additional allocation of £100,000 to help develop and strengthen leadership at all levels within Grampian. We're also fast-tracking the identification of a new chair for the board, with interviews taking place today and an expectation that the new chair will take up posts very early in the new year. The report of the Quality and Safety Review makes it clear that the Board is expected to develop a detailed and considered improvement plan that sets out exactly how it intends to implement the recommendations in the report, along with timescales for action and clear accountability. The plan will also be expected to clearly set out what success will look like. However, these are serious issues and while we expect immediate action to be taken in relation to several of the key findings, we cannot expect changes to culture and leadership to happen overnight. These changes must be taken forward in partnership with clinical and staff side representatives from the very beginning, if they're to be woven through the fabric of the organisation as we expect them to be. And we must accept that this will take some time. Scottish Government will be monitoring the implementation of this plan very closely in the coming months, and I'll be receiving regular updates on the progress um, as work goes forward. This has and will continue to be a difficult and challenging time for NHS Grampian, but by putting patient outcomes and patient experiences at the heart of their services and with the involvement of the committed and dedicated staff we know are working in NHS Grampian, I'm confident that NHS Grampian can turn around this situation and begin to live up to their ambition of providing top-class healthcare services for all of the people of the North East of Scotland. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. The Cabinet Secretary will now take questions on the issues raised in her statement and tend to allow you around 20 minutes for questions, after which we move on to the next item of business. It would be helpful if members who wish to ask a question were to press the request to speak button now. And I call Neil Findlay. 
President, officer, I'd like to thank the Cabinet Secretary for advance copy of her statement. Uh, this week's three reports into NHS Grampian and the Aberdeen Royal Infirmary paint a, a grim picture of the NHS in the North East. The weaknesses at board level, poor management, low morale, bullying, a lack of accountability, concerns ignored by managers, a staffing crisis, a system of cover that staff felt was unsafe, a surgical unit described as dys dysfunctional, patient flow and capacity at the ARI and Woodend Hospital not fit for purpose, putting patient safety at risk, inappropriate boarding, ineffective discharge systems, and wards continually short-staffed. Just some of the problems being experienced here. Many of these issues, of course, are common across the Scottish NHS and are not unique to Grampian. But what is evident is that there appears to be a small group of consultants at this hospital who appear to think that they are above the rules that apply to everyone else. So what will the Cabinet Secretary do to ensure that we have a culture where systematic failings are evident early, where a nurse, a support worker or a cleaner can have their concerns raised without fear for their job and action taken to address these concerns? And, and it does not rely on a powerful group of consultants with a hotline to a friendly minister to expose failings that have an impact on the well-being of staff and patients. And how does the Cabinet Secretary intend keeping this Parliament, but more importantly, the patients and taxpayers of Grampian informed of progress? Cabinet Secretary. OK, um, can I start by reiterating the point that is made in the report very clearly, and that is that although... Um, Patient, patient safety um, wasn't adversely affected by the circumstances at Grampian. I think it's important to reiterate that because we don't want patients to be afraid uh, of the services in NHS Grampian. The services provided and the results and the, uh, the outcomes for patients are, are as good as other parts of the, the health system here in Scotland. I think it's important to reiterate that. However, clearly these behaviours did not help in terms of improving patient care and indeed um, uh, the, because of the efforts of frontline staff in going the extra mile actually managed to overcome some of those uh, management clinician challenges which could have adversely uh, affected patient safety. The small group of uh, clinicians uh, who Neil Finlay uh, um, describes as thinking they're above the rules, I think I said very clearly in my statement, no one working in the NHS, no matter who they are, is above the rules. That type of behaviour would not be accepted in any other workplace and nor should it be accepted in the NHS. And we will absolutely make sure those issues are addressed. I'm sure uh, Neil Findlay will understand that there are a number of processes emerging from the report, whether that's the General Medical Council looking at those issues or indeed the in internal processes of NHS Grampian will have to take their course in addressing the behaviours of those individuals as those investigations go forward. But I can assure the member that that is exactly what will happen. In terms of whistleblowing, um, we already have processes in the NHS that encourage anyone who has concerns, no matter who they are working in the NHS, to be able to raise those concerns. And that's exactly what, what people should do. And in terms of keeping um, Parliament and, and importantly, the, the, the patients and, and public informed, I would certainly uh, expect, first of all, NHS Grampian, as they take forward their implementation plan for change, uh, to be very uh, uh, good with communication to staff, patients and the public about those changes that they're taking forward. And I'm very happy to keep Parliament informed, whether that's through the Health and Sport Committee or an update to, to Parliament here in terms of the progress being made uh, within NHS Grampian. The Cabinet Secretary for an advance copy of her statement. For those of us who represent the North East, the ongoing problems facing NHS Grampian are both concerning and upsetting. The reports clearly point to a number of areas for improvements to be made. Like, NH board, well, N, like health boards across Scotland, NHS Grampian is facing significant pressures from the increase in demand on health services and difficulty in recruiting and retaining key specialists and nursing staff, especially given the added pressures of the oil and gas industry. Patients want to be reassured when they go into hospital that they'll receive both first-class care and a well-managed service. And it is reassuring that the reports about NHS Grampian are clear that to date patient safety has not been compromised, and that is due to the hard work of its loyal staff. However, a number of failures in strategic leadership have been clearly articulated, and that is something which I know is being urgently addressed. Indeed, I'm pleased that NHS Grampian has already undertaken to act on all the recommendations made to it. 
SNP ministers are ultimately responsible for the NHS in Scotland and they must work to address the increasing problems we are facing within our health service. So can I therefore ask the Cabinet Secretary whether the Scottish Government will undertake a review of all current vacancies within the NHS Grampian area and look to publish an action plan to address staffing problems with the minimum of delay? Cabinet Secretary. Can I, I say to the, the, the member that... Uh, Absolutely, it's important that the NHS campaign were clear that they're going to act on all of the recommendations and accept all of the recommendations without reservation. I think that's very, very important. Uh, she highlights uh, the increased demand for NHS services, which is absolutely a, a, a pressure on NHS Grampian in the same way as it's a pressure on other parts of the, the health service. Recruitment challenges though are a particular issue for NHS Grampian because of the issues she's uh, cited in her, her question. They are uh, looking at uh, the use of um, the medical workforce bank um, and the, the way that uh, the nurse bank has operated in uh, other uh, parts of the, the, the country very successfully. The medical bank has worked very well in Lothian, so I know Grampian are, are looking at that as well. In terms of uh, the management of vacancies, there are some specialities which for a variety of, of reasons are much harder to fill because of the challenging nature, the 24-7 uh, available availability and, uh, and the, the pressures therefore uh, within those posts. So again, we're looking at how do we make those posts more attractive? How do we make them more flexible potentially? And we're working very closely, not just with NHS Grampian, but other boards to, to look at how we address those, those uh, difficult posts uh, to fill. So the member can be absolutely assured that we are not uh, just sending the new interim chief executive who started in his job uh, uh, this Monday uh, to sort of these problems out himself. He has got a team behind him and he has a lot of support from the Scottish Government in taking forward all of these issues. Kevin Stewart, followed by Lewis MacDonald. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, I appreciate the Interim Chief Executive of NHS Grampian meeting with MSPs on Monday and for the comprehensive briefing that we received there. I recognise that resources are in place to recruit for clinical and nursing vacancies and that there are funded plans to expand the nursing work workforce even further. But key workers often have difficulties in getting affordable housing in the area. Can the Cabinet Secretary give me an indication of how many houses will be allocated to health service staff on the Craig Inches site and what further plans the Government has to increase the number of affordable homes available for NH staff NHS staff in Aberdeen. Cabinet Secretary. I think that Kevin Stewart raises a, a really important issue here because we have to look at how do we tackle some of the underlying recruitment problems, not just an issue for the health board, but for the local authority as well. And without a doubt, the cost of living in Aberdeen is, is a critical issue. Uh, I can reassure the member that I have asked for um, an, an update uh, on the, the plans and the discussions that are going forward between the NHS and the Council around the uh, affordable housing solution. Um, I'm very happy uh, to share that with the member once I get an up-to-date briefing myself uh, and we'd be happy to keep any other uh, members uh, up-to-date with how that progresses. I think it's absolutely the type of innovative solution that we need to be able to overcome uh, some of the recruitment challenges within the public sector, within not just Aberdeen but uh, Aberdeenshire as well. Lewis MacDonald followed by Alex Salmond. Thank you very much. The Cabinet Secretary will be aware of the statutory duty of candour which applies in the NHS elsewhere in the UK and which would require publication of a report such as that from the Royal College of Surgeons which she has mentioned today. While that duty does not exist in the same form here, in the spirit of candour, will she urge NHS Grampian to publish the conclusions as well as the recommendations of that report as soon as possible? And will she tell us how she intends to reassure individual patients that they will be told whether their care has been affected by the unacceptable behaviour of a small number of consultants, which was identified by Health Improvement Scotland at the earliest possible date? Can I um, start with the, the issue of individual patients? Uh, the, the, his team and in their inspection looked at that issue very carefully to make sure that 
uh, there were not uh, any uh, individual patients who had been adversely affected and I know there was a, a degree of follow-up uh, to, to those patients so I hope I can uh, reassure him on that I'm ha happy to provide him with additional information about that if he'd find that helpful uh, in terms of the the conclusions of the report I mean he will understand that there is now a legal process around this and that the uh, certain individuals uh, who were named within that report have taken uh, uh, legal uh, action to, uh, to stop the, the report uh, being published. The NHS, NHS Grampian, therefore, are, are in the position at the moment of having to work through those legal issues to get to a position uh, at some point that the, the report can be published. So uh, I'm sure he'll understand uh, that point. However, the main findings of the dysfunctional nature uh, of the relationship between those clinicians and other clinicians and those clinicians and management are pretty much laid bare in the his report because the his team saw the report uh, and had a copy of that report and therefore reflected that in the findings of the his report so i don't think there's there's anything stopping us now or nhs scrampian getting on and resolving those details and they certainly do not have to wait for the publication of that report to, to do that and they're not they're getting on and, and doing that in terms of duty of candor the member will be aware of course that that is something that is uh, being looked at in terms of the public health bill uh, i think that uh, uh, it is um, certainly a measure that we, we should be taking. I think the, the whistleblowing procedures we have are good, but there's something about that explicit duty of candour that sends a very clear message to the NHS, and that's something that we'll take forward uh, through the, the Public Health Bill. Alex Salmon, followed by Alice McInnes. Thinking about the uh, serious problems in NHS Grampian and comparing with the tragedy in the, the Vale of Leven, wasn't the essential lesson of the Vale of Leven is that the health service had to develop systems that allowed the identification of problems before they impacted on patient care and safety? Uh, and surely that has happened in this case through Health Improvement Scotland. Uh, for example, accident and emergency rates are vastly better than it's just Grampian today than they were in 2006. Now, the Cabinet Secretary puts that down to the excellence and hard work of the staff of NHS Grampian. I think she's right to do so. And therefore, isn't it incumbent and every single member of this chamber to rally behind these staff and the new leadership of NHS Grampian and take matters forward. Cabinet Secretary. <clears throat> I absolutely uh, agree with, with the member on that point. The systems that we have in place, and although it can be uncomfortable reading, uh, I, as the Health Secretary, would rather know uh, warts and all where there are problems within our health service because only by knowing that can we actually take the steps to address it and previously uh, before these systems were set up of independent inspection we had no ability to uh, to, to look at in detail at some of the problems that were within the the health health system and I think um, the huge lessons that have been learned from uh, the Vale of Leven um, is, is a, a case in point there. In terms of the, the rallying behind the staff, absolutely. And I got the sense yesterday when I was meeting staff within the Aberdeen Royal Infirmary that <clears throat> what we have is a, a group of very, very dedicated staff who clearly were, were under a lot of pressure in terms of the report. It makes difficult reading. But they had a resolve to... Uh, to go forward and to make sure that Grampian can become one of the top performing boards in Scotland. And actually, when I met the board, uh, many of the non-executives within the board were very, very keen to step up uh, to the leadership plate and to help NHS Grampian to become that top performing health board that I think we all know that it can become. Alice McInnes, followed by Mark MacDonald. Presiding officer, the Cabinet Secretary mentioned um, in her statement 100 additional nursing posts. But this report is not the first one to warn that wards must have not only sufficient numbers of nurses, but also the right skills mix. Uh, what planning is the Scottish Government doing with the NHS boards to ensure that the right people are in the right place at the right time to maintain quality of care? And does the Cabinet Secretary believe in these circumstances NHS Grampian has the capacity to move at the pace required to effectively achieve the integration of health and social care? Cabinet Secretary. Well, the, the nurse numbers and additional investment in, in nurses, I, I laid out in my, my statement, it is a significant investment, but it's absolutely, the, the member's right in terms of the skill mix. 
And one of the, uh, the, the features I uh, found yesterday that was very heartening was that on one of the care of the elderly wards that I visited, they had absolutely looked at the skill mix. So it wasn't uh, just nurses, it was the allied health professionals, it was um, the healthcare assistants um, who were helping with some of the food and fluid issues that had been uh, highlighted in the, in the report in terms of making sure that those, those uh, personal care tasks are there. And I'm sure I'm, I'm not the only person in this chamber who, who will regularly see that coming through as an issue within their mailbag. So it's really important that we get the, the right skill mix. And of course, we are helping boards uh, to do that. In terms of the health and social care, it is really important for NHS Grampian and the same with, any, with all the rest of the boards uh, to absolutely make progress on this because only by integrating health and social care and by stopping people turning up at the front door of the hospital who do not need to be there, making sure that we uh, get people discharged from hospital who do not need to be there in a timely fashion, that we can actually reduce some of the pressures uh, on our acute sector, but also give patients a better experience. Because for a vulnerable elderly person, often, as we know, an acute hospital ward is the last place that they should be. And what I could say from what I saw yesterday is that actually on delayed discharge and dealing with discharge, NHS Grampian are doing a lot of work in that respect. So I have every confidence that they'll be able to take forward the integration plans. Can I say to members, I'm <coughs> extremely short for time this afternoon. I'm not going to get in everybody uh, who wants, so can I urge um, short questions and answers? Uh, Mark McDonald, followed by Richard Baker. Uh, message received and understood, presenting officer. Part of the responsibility for leadership at local level rests with the board. Does the cabinet secretary share my concern that the board appears to have not had a grip or sufficient proactive oversight of many of the aspects uh, of performance of the NHS in Grampian and has contributed to some of the leadership vacuum that existed? And can she say how she will be making clear to the new board uh, chairman or chairwoman the expectations of the board itself to provide effective scrutiny of these issues and challenge the executive of NHS Grampian? Cabinet secretary. Um, I think Mark McDonnell must have been a, a fly on the wall when I met with the board yesterday because one of the things the, that I was asked by one of the non-executive members was what, what more can we do as non-executives around the board table and uh, the answer I gave was to ask questions, to scrutinise and to absolutely make sure that anything that comes in front of them they are questioning and questioning and that is, as, as far as I'm concerned, a key role uh, of, of the, the, the non-executive members around the board table. Uh, obviously, as I laid out in my statement, there is a, a fast track to get a new chair in place. That chair uh, is going to have a key leadership role in making sure the board uh, go forward with renewed vigour, uh, along with supporting the interim chief executive. What I can say to reassure members is that absolutely the, the, the view I got from the board, every single person around that table, was that they wanted to take this as an opportunity to reset relationships in NHS Grampian, to reset the way they go about their business and really to take this opportunity to get Grampian uh, back on track to where it should be. Richard Baker and then very briefly Christian Allen. Thank you. The Cabinet Secretary's predecessor said that NHS Grampian would be brought more quickly towards parity of funding under the NRAC formula if more funds are made available for the NHS by the UK Government. Can the Cabinet Secretary confirm if this is still the Government's policy? Cabinet Secretary. Well, I think as I laid out uh, in my statement that with the additional investment, significant additional investment that was not seen previously, I have to remind the member of that, that we will by 2016-17 move uh, to within 1% of NRAT parity. I think that is a great deal of progress than has been made in previous years and I would have hoped that's something that the member would welcome. Finally, Christian Allard. Feedback is very important. I would like the Cabinet Secretary to understand that many comments on the patient opinion website tell us about the good experiences of patients in Grampian. However, the Healthcare Improvement Scotland report highlighted a very poor response rate to complaints made to NHS Grampian. Can she outline how the Scottish Government will expect the Board to respond to complaints and to uh, positive patient feedback, such as through patient opinion? Cabinet Secretary. 
Yeah, uh, this, the Scottish Government has provided updated guidance and training to all boards on responding to feedback and complaints. And uh, I made it very, very clear yesterday that this was a, an area that needed to be addressed. What I can reassure the member of that there's already been support from the Scottish Government working with NHS Grampian to make sure that they respond uh, not just uh, timidly to complaints, but that they address the complaints in a, a, a full uh, fashion as they should be. So that is a, a key priority moving forward, and I can keep the member updated about that progress. Thank you. That ends the statement by Shona Robertson on NHS Grampian Healthcare Improvement Scotland reports. The next item of business is a debate on motion number 11763 in the name of Mary Fee on private sector.